Hello and welcome back to An Old Man Watches and today I'm going to be talking about the micro-budget 2009 independent zombie film The Sky Has Fallen. And this film is set after a sudden and highly virulent plague has wiped out most of humanity, which maybe these days hits a bit closer to home than it used to. Uh, fortunately, a small percentage of people appear to be immune to this disease, uh, so we're not completely annihilated as a species, uh, and there are a few survivors. Unfortunately for those survivors, however, the danger is far from over. Strange, black-clad figures follow in the wake of the plague, hunting down, torturing and killing any living person they find, and then somehow reanimating the corpses of their victims as bloodthirsty zombies. These mysterious bad guys then use the zombies to hunt down the next batch of survivors. And we join two such survivors, Lance and Rachel, who are determined to find the leader of these creatures and kill them before humanity itself is wiped out. So, this is a pretty good chance you've never heard of this film. Uh, I only came across it due to a Kickstarter that they ran several years ago uh, to raise money to be able to enter the movie into some film festivals. I backed the Kickstarter, got a copy of the movie on DVD as a result, uh, and I did so for, for two primary reasons. The first uh, was that the film relied entirely on old-school practical effects rather than cheap CGI, uh, and I grew up in an area of practical effects, uh, movies like The Thing and Aliens. Um, and second, and for me more important, uh, was that it seemed to be a zombie film with more going on than just a bunch of people try to survive. Uh, the undead apocalypse has a purpose here, some kind of agency behind it, and that made it sound a little bit different from being just another Night of the Living Dead scenario. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Night of the Living Dead, but I have the original film on DVD. I don't need a thousand remakes and retreads of it. So I was eager to see if the sky had, has fallen could follow through on delivering something new in the zombie genre. Who are these black figures? How are they doing what they do? What is their goal? Can they be stopped? These are all obvious questions arising from the film scenario, and to be fair, they're all questions the film asks, but unfortunately it makes little to no discernible effort to provide an answer to any of them. Now, not answering questions can be a valid narrative choice. The characters in Night of the Living Dead do wonder about the source of the zombie apocalypse and even float a few theories without ever giving a firm answer, uh, except in the abysmal 30th anniversary edition of the film, uh, which you should avoid seeing. Uh, but why is this happening is purely a rhetorical question in that movie. It doesn't need an answer, because the film's not about why or how the situation happened, but about whether the people caught in it will survive. If you centre a, a question or a mystery in your plot and then you don't answer it, you're asking your audience to engage with a part of your film that will have no resolution. Now, this kind of thing can be pulled off, but it's a risky strategy that requires exceptional script finesse. Finesse that this film's script, frankly, doesn't have. Now, another issue with the script is one of structure. Uh, a vast majority of the film's runtime consists of two people wandering around a forest, having lots of introspective conversations, and occasionally being interrupted by clumps of zombies who they then massacre. At which point the loop repeats. Introspection, zombies. Introspection, zombies. And so on. This means that there's only ever really one of two things going on. Talking or fighting. Uh, but that's far from the only weakness. Um, the conversations are filmed with pretty boring and static shot-reverse-shot talking heads approach. Picture of Lance, picture of Rachel, picture of Lance, picture of Rachel. Meaning the film's momentum comes to a halt every time they start up a conversation. I was going to say it comes to a screeching halt, but that would be overselling the amount of momentum that the fight scenes build up. They're unfortunately not especially well choreographed and they all feel rather samey. There's little sense of an escalation or threat or stakes from them. No sense that they serve a narrative purpose beyond being a fight scene because it's time for some action. A well-structured fight scene has a narrative of its own and also ideally contributes to the wider plotline of the story. 
consider the highway fight between Captain America and the Winter Soldier, for instance. Cap makes extensive use of his shield in the opening exchanges, leading to a bit of an uh-oh moment and momentum shift in the fight when the Winter Soldier grabs the shield off him. When Cap later recovers the shield, it's a sign the fight is moving into its final stage, which is the revelation of the enemy's identity. Internal narrative within the fight, impact the wider story. It's a clever piece of filmmaking. The Sky Has Fallen doesn't do these things, and the action sequences lack any weight or consequence because of it, and they don't really contribute to making the film feel more exciting. Now, while I've complained a lot about the script, and I do overall think that this is a very flawed film, I have to admit that the practical effects work is, is solid. The zombies are mutilated and gory monstrosities, blistered and scarred and often surgically implanted with hooks, blades and other deadly melee weapons. Uh, the film is rather overfond of spattering fake blood across the forest foliage, but there's definitely plenty of care and attention to detail invested into both the gore and the zombies. Less care and attention is spent on the human cast, uh, who are frankly rather too well groomed for their supposed circumstances. Uh, the film would be more convincing if they were more unkempt and dirty. Uh, I suspect that real world resource constraints played a major part in this failing. If you dirty up an, act an actor for a day's shooting, you have to make sure you dirty up them up in exactly the same way the next day, or it's going to be obvious that you know the spots on them are moving around. Maintaining that level of consistency would have added significantly to cost and complexity of the shoot. Ultimately, The Sky Has Fallen feels very much like a love letter to the practical gore effects of the late 70s and early 80s, and it succeeds pretty well on that front, but it falls short on pretty much every other measure. Only check it out if you're as passionate about old-school practical effects work as the makers of this move movie seem to be. Next time... House of Cards, but not the multi-season US version that started excellently and ultimately collapsed under the weight of Kevin Spacey's sex scandal and its own increasingly absurd plot lines. Uh, this is the much shorter 1990 original from the United Kingdom. But that's next time. Until then, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.